Welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, Some Dungeon Guy. Today, I'm doing a Wonder Draft tutorial on how to convert your world maps into regional maps. Let's go. Alrighty, folks. So, here's where we're going to start our process. Okay, we're going to do that uh, world map to regional map. And to start that, we're going to open up a brand new map file. Okay, now you may already have a world map that you want to convert down, and that's perfectly fine. You would just kind of skip forward to the timestamps uh, where we start tracing the image. So, but for now, I'm going to do a standard map. And I'm actually going to walk you through the process of building a world map. We're going to do something super simple just to get you the ideas down. And then we'll kind of go from there. Uh, we'll show you how to import that world map in and rescale it so you can actually draw over it and make a brand new regional map. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and generate some land because I don't have one pre built. Okay, and I want something with a little bit of interest. So we've got some nice craggy bits. And of course you can certainly use the land tool and you can draw in what you like, but I'm going to use this bad boy. Okay. So we're going to do just like we would, if we were creating a brand new map, I'm going to start with settlements just so I have a few to kind of show you the process. And just like that. We're going to plop a couple down. Okay. Uh, I like to do my symbols. I like to do mountains next because they're going to take up a large portion of your uh, actual land formation. Pop a couple in. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that uh, when you do this process, your mountains are not going to scale up to look as large as they are against your cities uh, and settlements like they do right now, but that's okay. Yeah, still get a good representation. Just dragging and putting a couple mountains in, just like that. Again, if you don't have something in mind, you can kind of play with it and do what you like, but there's some mountains. You get back and do a few trees deciduous bad boys now i tuck my trees in between my mountains uh, just to give it a little bit of color pop and you know you might have a forested mountain you might choose pine trees heck you might choose palm trees you know it uh, depends on the setting you're in but um you know this just kind of gives it some color i'm just going to show you the process of converting it over now just like that sticking a couple trees in you can use the spray brush tool and things like that if you are not overly familiar with in wonder draft then check out my tutorials down below and I actually walk you through the basics of how to make your own world map or regional map for that matter. All the things kind of convert. Uh, once we've got our basic stuff, we're going to go ahead and choose some paths. Now paths are pretty straightforward. Once you choose your color and whatever path you like, um, you just kind of draw them out. Now the left mouse button starts a path just like that. Uh, every time you click the left mouse button, it starts at anchor point. See how it anchors. And you know, you want your path to wander. Uh, that's kind of how they do in the real world. So. Now, and you can choose that roughness on the right hand side of your screen and it's going to change how they do a bit. I'm going to draw a couple of paths here. Now this might make a little bit more sense in a minute, but I'm going to do a path around the place where there are no other civilizations because once you get down to regional level, you might find yourself with a little extra detail. Room. So let's say we have a world map and we're going to export that. Now when we export it, it is very important that this export trace tool is checked. Okay. So that's going to optimize it and for the tracing process that comes next. So just like that, we're going to hit OK. Uh, we're going to name that WD map. Now, I've already got this folder set up for Wonder Draft, so you can certainly name your file anything you want. Uh, my suggestion would be to make sure you keep track of where that file is because you're going to use it in just a second. So we're going to hit Save. If you already have a world map that you're looking to convert into a regional map, this is still going to be the same process, OK? Uh, the only difference is you wouldn't have had to make a new world map. So we're going to open a new map. Okay. Again, standard default. So you can change that to whatever you'd like. Now, the good news is that when we're tracing our world map to make it a regional map, uh, the scaling really works with any shape of map that you like. All right. So number one, we're going to choose the overlay tool on the left hand side. The first option is going to be the trace tool. On the right, it's going to give you several options. You're going to be able to choose an image that we're going to trace, which is going to be that world map that we just created. You can scale it, which we'll show you here in a moment. Let's go ahead and select that image. All right. Now, remember, I told you you should keep track of where you keep your files. Well, hopefully you did that. You're just going to go back into the folder where you saved it and hit open. Now, notice it changed colors. That's because this is an overlay and your default mouse is the pan option. Okay. So you're going to kind of move that a little bit if you want. Now, Here's where we get to the other controls. Scale. Most important thing we're going to do. Obviously, we have a world scale. If we scale that up, then next thing you know, we have ourselves a more detailed area. So this is going to become our regional 
map. Now I'm going to switch it down a little, but I kind of like how these coasts landed out. And you see some paths that don't really lead anywhere. Right? Again, we're going to make, we're going to get to that. So under opacity, you can lower that down so you don't see it at all. And you can raise it up so it's all you see. I like to keep it somewhere on the lower side. You can rotate your map, and when you do so, you know you may want a different perspective. It may have been mapped out from a different area. You know, it depends on your storyline, depends on what you got going on in your world. And next, once we've got it to the scale we like, we're basically just going to draw back over it, uh, like we're creating a new map. This time, though, we have something to go by. All right? Last time, I was kind of just freewheeling, making my own map, doing my own thing. Um, we're going to do kind of similar. Uh, I'm roughing it in now. You can certainly take some time. You can take some time and you can really hone this in to make this an exact copy of your previous map. You know, I encourage you to do that if that's what you'd like to do. Uh, you know, I'm not that picky. Uh, most of my players, they don't mind. Uh, so, and once you uh, factor in the fact that any medieval style map, any fantasy map might not be made with the best cartography skills uh, that there were. So, you know, there could be some differences in the maps players or readers get them again roughing these in i'm going to go back in and choose the land raise tool for the rest of my uh land options here and i draw them in now this is one thing i really like about wonder draft that a lot of other map like app mapping applications don't seem to do very well is this land raise tool now, this is kind of neat because as you can see it's kind of forming in as you as you drag your brush and you can really make some some weird shapes and things on the other hand, and I'm kind of tracing my previous map. Now, again, since it is a regional map, you can certainly make some changes here, okay? Now, I encourage that behavior to a certain degree. Let's say you make, you know, this portion of your map, and you decide, oh, I really wish I'd had a smaller island. Well, look at that. Boom, smaller island inside of your lake. Maybe you decide that you want an extra town that maybe wasn't on your main map. Well, again, that's, this is your time. And again, if you want to explain that in your storyline, it's just that easy. You know, you got a more detailed copy of the map. And so now the players, readers, whoever you got your audience can see a little better as to what they're doing. I'm just gonna rough out these edges just a little. But again, take all the time you want, make as much detail or as little as you'd like, and make the map your own. Now, we're almost, we're almost done folks. So not a whole lot left uh, to do. We're just going to go to our symbols. Uh, I'm going to choose my civilizations, my settlements first. Now, they don't have to be the same scale as they were before. Uh, I'm going to keep mine a little smaller because they're simply representing the location, not necessarily the actual size of the settlement. And I've got these two. If you're having trouble seeing it, don't forget you can switch over to this overlay. You can change that opacity up and down. Okay. Now, I kind of have an idea where I'm at, so I'm going to go. go back to symbols. Now, we're going to do our mountains. Again, choosing the same texture for our mountains, notice that this is as large as it gets, okay? So they're not gonna have that same epic scale that they do now that you've zoomed in and changed the scale of the map, but it's gonna get you pretty close, okay? Now, different map assets here, uh, different symbols on the right-hand side are gonna produce different scaling results uh, just because of the way that they're formatted. You know, so play around with it. You can change what kind of assets you're using. You know, if you have a different style of map, you can change the mountain colors, You could uh, make them the paintable mountains, you know, you do whatever you like. Uh, and you can kind of change up the feel of it as well. It could be, uh, you know, even just as much as being from a different cartographer, a different person mapped it. So it's going to have a little bit of a different look to it. And our mountainous section is pretty well good. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect, but you can go back and change it anytime you want. You're going to have the save file. And last but not least, and dot them in here i fill out a little forest now at this point you could also do some clearings you could uh, insert some points of interest in some of these places maybe down in these trees you have uh, a little hidden temple or a shrine uh, maybe you have an elven village maybe you have orcs uh, patrolling the woods this is a good time to add some of those flare points uh, you know and i'm a big fan of kind of changing my maps on the fly when i'm playing for that very reason because things pop up maybe it's somewhere that isn't uh, isn't necessarily known for the rest of the world you know, it's a good time to make that thing known to the world. All right, and just like that, you can see this is coming along nicely. It is a fair representation of the previous map, uh, if I do say so myself. 
If you see I'm doing something that uh, maybe there's a better way to do it, please educate me. Leave me a comment below, kind of give me an idea of what I'm doing. And if you like my videos, don't forget, hit that like button. Doesn't hurt my feelings if you hit it. All right, last thing we got to think here is the path. So we're going to go in, choose our path tool. I'm going to use the same colors for this purpose. Again, feel free to change it, do what you'd like to do. And map this around. Um, it's going to come through those forests. Same thing here. Now, even though this path goes completely off the map, we're still going to use it because you know, it still goes somewhere. And this is where I was talking. If you decide that you want like a little village or something, maybe there's a small settlement on this island, uh, you know, maybe on the back side of the island over here, right? You can add those in. It's secret things that you suddenly have discovered. You have tons of assets to play with. You can use whatever symbols you like. But just like that, we now have a converted regional map and if we go to the overlay and we go ahead and change that opacity all the way down to zero, you can see this is before or after the trace, this is before. It's a pretty good representation, but take some time if you'd like, get all these islands just perfect, just exactly how you like them. Uh, it's not that bad to do. Just like that, and we can, you know, options are yours. So hopefully you learned a little bit of something about the trace tool. Don't forget that this tool is uh, backwards compatible. So if you already had this region map, and you want to make that into a full fledged continent. Uh, you could use the trace tool, start all over, scale that up and then continue the drawing from that. You just change the scale the other way, make it smaller. So it's a small portion and there you go. But just like that, folks, there you have it. You have now converted a world map into a regional map. Thanks for joining me. Well, folks, hopefully you learned a little bit of something today. If you like what you saw, go ahead and hit that like button. Subscribe if you want more map making Dungeons and Dragons role playing content. As always, leave a comment below if you have other ideas, if I did something right or wrong, or if you'd like to see something in the future. And as always, thank you and have a good day.